Good day, viewers. We thank the Lord again for such a time as this, Bible study time. And we're trusting the Lord again to strengthen our faith as we receive of his word. We are still staying on the sub team that we've been looking at for some weeks now, Christian's knowledge of God. And our specific to topic for today says, God, the creator of heaven and earth. Last week, God brought us to that point where we appreciated that he alone is the source through life. We consider God as life. And today we'll build on that to look at this all-sufficient God as the creator of heaven and earth. I have with me in the studio our fathers in God, whom the Lord will be using to take us through this important study. By my right is the Reverend Canon Smart Sunday Simon. Is the vicar NTA Chapel here in Abuja Diocese. Father in God, you're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. And, and then by my left is our father, Venerable Olushegu Majekudumi. He's a priest retired in this diocese. Father in God, you're welcome to the program, sir. Welcome to us. I encourage you to make sure you are seated tight, get your notes. God will be saying something to us. And in the same vein, invite people around you. Let's sit and learn briefly at the feet of Jesus. Our aim under this topic will be to help us acknowledge that God is the ultimate creator and preserver of the whole universe. You know, it's not enough that he created the world. It's interesting and exciting to know that God is still the one who is keeping the universe. He's still in charge, no matter what we see happening around us. So we are trusting the Lord that we'll be able to appreciate that by the end of today's study. Quickly, in our tradition, I would like to take the background text. Isaiah chapter 45, I will read from verse 5 to 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Scriptures. Isaiah 45. I am the Lord. And there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will guard you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Let the potsherd strive with the potsherd of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or shall your handwork say, he has no hands. This is the word of the Lord. Mm. Thanks be to God. God. We go through the introduction together. To think that no one created the world is as good as thinking that no one manufactured the wristwatches in our hands. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, inductive reasoning that A exists is because there is something, a factor that brought A to B. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to take that line again because it's quite instructive. To think that no one created the world is as good as thinking that no one manufactured the wristwatches in our hands. According to Marilyn Baker, a blind singer, it is not chance that brought things into being. Chance could not have made it all so very well. Genesis chapter 1 gives us a detailed account of how God created everything. Seeing God as the creator is expected to create a sense of awe and reverence for him in our hearts. You know that line by Marilyn Baker. If it was chance, maybe we would have lost the order. Mm -hmm. But look at the great intelligence behind our earth. The great intelligence behind the heavenly bodies around us, the galaxies, the stars and their motion. You know, it would be foolhardy for one to begin to think that these things were a product of chance. The intelligence is just too great. 
too great for the ordinary mind to fathom. And we are trusting the Lord that the Lord will help us to see that that intelligence behind what we see around us is God. The one whose understanding is unsearchable. That's the word of the Lord in Isaiah chapter 40, 28 following. He said there is no searching of his understanding. I pray that the Lord will help us as we discuss together. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Venerable Father and God, sir. From our text today, that's the scripture that I just read out now. Isaiah 45, 5 to 9. Maybe for emphasis, let me go through it again. I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God beside me. I will guard you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Let the post shed strive with the post sheds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or shall your hand work say, He has no hands? Now, looking at these texts, Father and God, sir. How would you convince a doubter that God indeed is the creator of the whole universe? Compare with John chapter 1, 1 to 4. You help us read that, Father and God, sir, and then we share in your thoughts. God as the creator of the whole universe. John chapter, John chapter 1, from verse 1 to, to 4. 4. Yes, sir. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Mm -hmm. He was in the beginning with, with God. God. All Without things him. were made through him. Without him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Hmm. In him was life. And the life, and the life was the, the light, light of, of men. Man. And the light shines in the darkness. The darkness. And the darkness Good. did not comprehend it. Awesome. This is the word of God. Thanks be to, to God. God. You know, looking at these two scriptures, the word of prophet Isaiah, the word of the Lord as recorded by prophet Isaiah, and then John chapter 1, 1 to 4. How will you convince someone out there who thinks that this universe is just a product of chance, that God indeed is the creator? Um, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think the point is, what is creation? Yes, sir. Itself. Mm. Because if we look at what creation is, mm. then it becomes easier to on something that seems so complex becomes easier, easier to understand. understand. Exactly. Mm. A simple doctrine of creation is God created the entire universe. Yes, sir. Out of nothing. Mm. And when he created it, it was generally good. Awesome. <laughs> Jesus. Then, we must remember that he created it to glorify himself. Yes, sir. Mm. Because nothing existed before. Except God, God himself. Awesome. The whole universe. And when you think of the universe, when we were young, and we were doing geography in school. All we knew was the Milky Galaxy. Yes, sir. And we thought that was something. Not know that Milky Gal Galaxy is an infinitesimal part of the, part of the universe. Mm. So the vastness of the universe is just unthinkable. Yes, sir. Um, this popular man, Musk, Elon Musk. Elon Musk, yeah. Put something in space. The thing has run 16 billion miles within a few years. A few years. <laughs> that shows how vast the, the universe the cosmos is. And it keeps expanding. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in the context of Isaiah 45, where, where we're looking at, if we look at that scripture, Isaiah himself predicted 
Cyrus. This is God talking through Isaiah mm. about 150 years before Draw it. Cyrus ever came. came. So where did that thought come from? And it was not just for, there was a purpose mm. for what God said in Isaiah 45. If I not just for tonight, even if you take it as far as uh, uh, verse 14, it's 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 a whole lot of thing. Note, Isaiah was a prophet in Israel. Yes, sir. Right in verse one of Isaiah 45, the Bible tells us his name. Hmm. He mentioned Cyrus by his, his name. name. And then the purpose was to bring Cyrus to do one thing concerning his own people, the Jews, Israel, because they were scattered in exile, Babylon. Scattered in exile. So the purpose was to come and for this man to rescue them in a situation that it was impossible. Yes, sir. And that's why you see he gave the man all that was required mm. because he's the one who can make it all then if we now go into the details of of, of the part of our text you find that he enabled him in all ramifications awesome praise god hallelujah so the god who would have brought about this order this cohesion all this word is not just a God who does not exist. He's not just a God who cannot create. There is a purpose why he raised Cyrus. So if there is any reason why the man out there need not doubt the existence of this God, I mean, his, the account that our Father and God shared with us of the experience with King Cyrus is one that supports the fact that God indeed exists and that he creates. Canon, mm. sir, your thoughts on this? Thank you so much. Now, talking about how will I convince a doubter? Yes, sir. I think that it's just to lay the scripture bear before him and say, this is the facts. And our Father in the Lord has started laying those facts. But I, 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 permit me to say that one of the fundamental truths of the Bible is that God is the creator of all that is. Yes, sir. And I would like to look at who is a creator. A creator is one who makes something new. Mm. Now, for a human being to create anything, there is always an existing raw material exactly, with sir. which he will use to invent, create, or make anything. But with God, there was no pre-existing raw material. Yes, sir. God simply speak. And these things came, came be. into being. Awesome. So that is that. So God has no such raw material with which you would need to work. So when we say that God is the creator, we mean that he is truly creative in a category of all himself. He mm. is creative. Mm. And he just sat and spoke a word and everything came, came into being. being. Awesome. Awesome. I think there's a there's a popular how do you, ex nihilo yes, the he God who creates out of nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Out of nothing. nothing. Awesome. Out, out, out of nothing. And then the comparison with John chapter one one to four that this God had existed in the very beginning. Now John chapter one one to four. You see, all these things were saying. Yes, sir. God actually gave us, made it simple. Hmm. Because he gave us a whole, uh, how do you say, a whole text. Hmm. The Bible is the knowledge God wants us to have of him. Exactly, sir. And you will notice that in Genesis chapter 1, uh, he started, he said, let us Make man in our own making and likeness. And then, of course, it means the song was there, the Holy Spirit was there. And when he now changed the covenant, 
<laughs> yes, sir. From the old to the new. New order. <laughs> uh, the Bible says in the beginning yeah. was the word. And, and the, the word was with God. And the word was God. Because it's the same substance. Awesome. And all things were made through him and by him. And there was nothing that was made that was not by him. And then he said, in him was the, the life. life. And the, the life, life was the life was the life of, of men. Uh, the thing transcends so 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 much because we, later we we'll, we we will get to know okay, that through whom he has made we can make a summary of who God is because God we, we have said Jesus is the exact representation of his father. The image, yeah. In other words, he created everything. We can say God is the MD. Uh, German. Yeah. Jesus is the uh, <laughs> Yeah, if you he like He created me. everything. He sustains everything. And by his will, all things they exist. He does what he pleases. He rules awesome. over all. Awesome. None of his plan can be stopped from him, through him, man. To him, all things belong. Awesome. And all things, he has dominion, everlasting mm -hmm. dominion. Nothing is too hard for him. Awesome. His counsel stands forever. Exactly. And in verse 9 of our text, he talks about the potter. He says, for those who are doubting, Will you strive with your maker? God, the, uh, can, the, can, the can a man strive with his maker? Uh -huh. You can ask the potter, what are you doing? You have you've not made hard mm. <laughs> Can a man strive with his maker? Mm. He's wasting his, his time. time. So there is, there is completeness. And all the doubter needs to do is to look at the evidences that are available. Awesome. You know, there's a concept in law that talks about the body of evidence that is available. I can't exactly remember the Latin word, but the way our Father and God is saying it, and I cannot, cannot brought it up earlier, that just to present the evidence of the scripture yes. before that man will doubt. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning, God. John chapter 1 verse 3, in the beginning again was the word, hmm. and that word is God. So from, from day one, as you open the Bible, you need to know, you need not to be in doubt. In doubt. That look, that is a creator, and oh. this creator is God. God. And that is why you open the Bible, you see it clearly. Awesome. You know, in comparative religion, hardly does any other so-called holy book mm. of other religions answer these basic questions, questions of life. Exactly. Who started it? What is the purpose, purpose. of man? The epitome of his creation? Mm. Because he placed man in a, such a special place. Mm. And the more you look at the handwork of God, the more convinced you are. You need to be. He answers all the questions. You know, that's why the introduction says the seeing God as creator is expected to create a sense of awe oh, and reverence yes. for him in our hearts. And that is said, the more you look at God in all this magnificence, <laughs> you begin to appreciate that this God indeed is good. We'll be back in a moment. Child of God to continue. God bless you. Now stream, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing. Now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN is now streaming, discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities and our country. Welcome back. Remember, our topic, the discussion today, is centered on God, the creator of heaven and earth. And I've been in the studio with our fathers in God, Venerable Olusegun Majekudumi and Reverend Canon Smart Sunday Simon. Welcome to the program once again. Thank you so much. 
Canon, sir. Yes, sir. Read the first paragraphs of the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed and highlight evidences for God as creator. Let's take those two creeds, the first paragraphs, and then what evidences can we glean from the weddings of those creeds to strengthen the argument that God is the creator? You help us read. All right, thank you so much. The, from the Apostles' Creed, mm. uh, the first paragraph says, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty. creator of heaven and earth. And when we get to the Nicene Creed, it says, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. You know, that part excites me, that all that is, is not just limited to what is seen, but there is the seen and unseen <laughs> component. <laughs> all right, um, we, we need to start by looking at the word creed, which is a Latin word for credo, mm. which is a statement of belief. Yes, sir. And creed, both Apostles' Creed and Nicene Creed, you can't open the Bible and find one passage where all of them are. Mm. It's a statement that is scattered all over the scripture. Yes, sir. From Genesis, you're going to begin to see these statements to the, to, to the next one and all that. And by the time you put them together, it gives you comprehensive statement about whom God is. Awesome. Now, we said, I believe in God. Now, this is a statement of belief. Yes, sir. You must first of all believe. Hmm. That is why this issue that we are discussing, to him who has not come Be to believe, believe, it will not make any it sense will sound to him. Greek or Latin. So the first thing is, you need to believe. And who are you believing in? In God. God. Who is this God? The, the creator. creator of the heavens and, and the earth. earth. But then I want to emphasize the fact that he is the father. Yes, sir. Now, when you talk about the Father, it means that God is the source. Hmm. A father is the progenitor. Yes, sir. So when you say he is the father, it means that everything starts, emanated, begins with him. Awesome. So when you are called father, Jesus. we are all uh, male uh, being here. Mm. When they say you are a father, father, it's such a privileged position yes, sir. that God has placed man mm. to say that you are a father. Mm. You are a source. Mm. And we are driving that source from who? From God, God. Almighty. Mm. And now we are saying Almighty. So there are other mighty. Mm. But when it comes to God, he mm. is the Almighty. Mighty. Jesus. And he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now, that particular phrase can be traced back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. That says, in the beginning, God, God created, created the heavens and the and earth. earth. Now, when science did not understand this, they could not know how to explain the issue of creation. They brought about Big Bang Theory mm. by telling us, that meteorite and artery came from somewhere and hit somewhere and then things begin to come up. Mm. It can be. When, when you look at it, it looks like this thing just happened by chance. Mm. Something hit something and all that. And I ask myself, that thing, that meteorite that came to hit something, where, where did, did it come, come from? from? Where did it come from? <laughs> so there is a God behind the scene who is the designer who is the creator, who is so creative, and also the sustainer, and the sustainer that has done all this. Hmm. And that is just what this creed is simply telling know. us, you know, whom this God you is. You know, I love the way the language we say, say, well, science could not understand this. Mm -hmm. There's another angle to it, evolution. Mm -hmm. And somebody has put the question, how come? The whole process yeah, of big evolution. Yeah, and evolution. Uh, how come the whole process of uh, yeah, seems to have from, been halted? 
started why from. have we not evolved beyond the state where we are now that's Which right is supposed to be continued. we should have changed we should have changed from where we are now to another thing <laughs> so we will continue to Maybe evolve Having five legs. <laughs> 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 Very for that God. Your thoughts on this? Because this is, you know, look at the cosmos. Look at how intelligent <laughs> God is. Uh, you see, the, 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 also, it's interesting because in the Apostles, he said, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the Nicene Creed, it says, I believe in one God, God. the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And of all that is seen. And, and unseen. unseen. You see, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the Nazi Creed more or less built on the, the Apostles' Creed. You know, there was this Aryan problem. Uh, yeah, Aryan controversy. Uh, who was and then the Council of Nicaea uh, need to meet. Then the Council of Nicaea came, that's 325. Uh, there about and then they had to meet mm. and to say this this heresy needs to stop mm. and how to prove that God is the Trinity mm. the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son are on one substance yes sir so is still one God mm. who does all things. And of course, it goes on to expand in details and also expand our belief. Yes, sir. To the point where it became acceptable to those who were of the scriptures at that time and still acceptable to, to us. us. Because it's consistent with because the word of the Lord. Because it's consistent, it has not changed. changed. It will not change. Change because God does not, not change. change. Mm. Every other thing in creation is finite. Mm. God is not finite. Mm. And that's why at the end of the day, he's the all you know. Awesome. Mm -hmm. He is infinite. 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 Mm. That is the truth. Isaiah chapter 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Heard the everlasting God, God the, the Lord, cre the Creator of the heavens, of and, the heavens the and the earth. He said, "There is no searching of His understanding. Mm. You can't just mm. fathom." I know. I love science. I love the empiricity of science. You try to build on facts, use data to generate evidence. Mm. You know, in some of our professional colleagues, we do this thing. But when it comes to God, you can't just begin to use science to cage God. No, the, the, you the, can't. The interesting thing about science is never in the history that we know of hmm. has Bible, has science proved Bible right as it is doing in, our in this age. Hmm. That's right. And when you look at it, God, the creator, hmm. he made his creation. But then he made the epitome for that creation. Man. And that is man. And over the years, this man who is thinking that he's clever, he's talking about uh, uh, evolution, all these things, he doesn't talk much about it these days anymore. Hmm. Because Okay, it's gotten to a point now where man has created robots. Even robots that can talk to each other. Mm. Robots that can think. That's artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. Mm. Who gave him the intelligence? God. Don't forget, this Bible, whatever is happening now, is also proving true. Because he said, at the end of time, knowledge will increase. will increase. In the history of man, never has knowledge increased as it had increased. Information in the last super high. Because years. you move with the information in your hands. Yes. At every point in time, you need information and is available. Look what is happening even as we speak now. While we are still talking about this new thing or new digital or new that one, that one, tomorrow, 
another no one has, has come. In fact, someone said that even the fastest computer cannot equate to the brain. That's the brain that God gives man. Uh, supersonic speed. As much as they have in, in terms of processing you, things you, and issues, you if, cannot. If there is anything, let's pray against that. If there is anything, if man is not careful, you see, he, he, building the Tower of Babel didn't just start at that time, but it didn't stop. Mm. Now, in our time, men are still building. Men who want to do things that will test God. Hmm. And the truth is, when you test God, you're gone. You're gone. He, because, Isaiah chapter 42, 8, his glory, he will never share yeah. with any man. Amen. I pray that God will grant us understanding Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Discuss how the knowledge of God has created to can boost our faith in challenging situations. E.g. coping with a bad medical report. Father in God, Ren Rebosa, Psalm mm -hmm. chapter 50, verse 15. Reverend Canon, sir, Isaiah 41, 18, as well as Isaiah 43, 19. Now quickly read Acts 16, 25 to 26, and then we'll begin to wrap it up. Um, 50, 15. 15 uh, says, uh, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, mm. and you shall glorify me. Awesome. Isaiah 41, verse 18. Isaiah 41, verse 18. I will open rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. 4319. 4319. Behold, I will do a new thing. Awesome. Now it shall spring, spring forth. forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, 25 to 26. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chain were loosed. Now, looking at all this scripture now, and appreciating that this God, knowing him as the creator, how can he help someone? Perhaps that man out there who is watching, that woman out, out there, who has this negative medical report before him or her, how can this boost such a person's faith? Father and God, sir, as we conclude. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Um, please, I will take... The, maybe I will call it a beautiful opportunity to use a personal experience. Mm. Um, praise God. Hallelujah. We, we, God gave us the grace mm. to mm. know Him. I get to know, I got to know God mainly through my mother. Mm. Because uh, when we were young, when I was, I was playful, I was a bit. <laughs> I look gentle, but I was a bit stubborn. <laughs> I, I can imagine. Why my father would just, you know, slap you here and there. If I offend them, mother would say, we we'll just keep quiet. 3 a.m., she will wake you. And then you we'll talk. Then she will open the book of Proverbs. And you, you won't sleep till 6. So with that one, and by the grace of God, as we grew up, we got born again and so on. So... God has given us the privilege and opportunity to know mm -hmm. him. Not just knowing him, even to call us mm. to serve him. Yes. But one thing happened in my I, I share this experience because what we see here is the truth. Mm. If you know him, nothing is beyond him. Mm. Jesus. And as his nothing as his, is beyond as his, him as his child, if you know him. He will take care of you. Yes, sir. My own father loved children to a fault. If rain is falling, he will start shouting your names mm. to sh make sure you are under his roof. Mm. Um, we lost our first son mm. in 2014. 
He was, he was what you call a star. Hmm. By 23, he had two master's degree. He was with MTM, best manager, middle level, hmm. and so on. And um, he went on holiday. Within four or five days after we saw them off, he died. If somebody had told me before then that if your son died, I, I, I would simply say, maybe I will also die. Hmm. But God, when he sees you at a point where he knows this thing can really break you, he takes care of you in a special way. Awesome. And the morning, I asked God, I said, but you said this boy will live. Even when he was three, he was so ill. And then you said he was going to serve you. Jesus. And for the first time in my life, I said, but has he served you? I was speaking out loud. Has he served you? He's just 29 and he's dead. Then he said, I heard the voice. Who told you he has not served me? Hmm. And I looked around. I didn't see anybody, of course. But you heard the voice. But I heard the voice. Yes, sir. Then he said, did he tell you before he went to Bible college? I said, no. Do you know what he did, what he has done amongst children and youth? Hmm. I said, no. I said, the long and short of it, I got to it. I said, but you, because you said he was going to serve you, I thought you made me a priest just to lay foundation for him. I thought he was going to be a big man, bishop, mm. general of us here. Mm. Then he said, uh, have you not seen, have you not had men who became big geo, bishop, this and that, and either because of fame, money, women, something. They, grew, they fell and they went to hell. He so said, which do you prefer? Jesus. That I take him as young as he is and is with me forever? Or which do you prefer? Or some testimony. By the time he said that, I was entering the house. I just laid flat. That if it is hell or heaven, Father, I gave up. That night, the same night, Somebody came from Lagos and gave me a message that I was to be given. From the son of Baba, our venerable Titus Adeboe. Then that passage was Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah uh, let's 57. Maybe we'll read that as we begin to yes, wrap up. Isaiah 57, chapter Verses. I mean, verse 1. He said, the righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away. Why no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil? That confirmed what happened the Did. morning. Awesome. The confirmation went on. Three weeks later, I was having problems. Things were falling in my hands. And I knew something was wrong somewhere. Then I spoke to God again. He gave me the name of one of our bishops. I said I should go and visit him. I went, and when the man would pray together, then he said I should open to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 24. This is reality of uh, yeah, that the Yeah, Ezekiel maybe. 24, verse 15 to 18. I'll read that quickly so that we can, because yes. I, I, this is a personal testimony. It's an encouragement to someone yes. out there. So we just read that scripture, and then Daddy, you tie up the thoughts. Yes. Verse 15. Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke. Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, nor shall your tears run down. Sigh in silence. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your turban on your head and put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your lips and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. So I spoke to the people in the morning and at evening my wife died. And the next morning I did as I was commanded. So the bishop gave me this passage after we prayed and said you cannot mourn. God says you should not mourn. Go. And that solved my problem. Awesome. You know, hallelujah. You know the other this thing I wanted is even quote Jehoshaphat. <laughs> when he was surrounded by three powerful kings. Kings. He went to God. I mean your hands so my people God said this fight is not for you. Hmm. So I love that scripture. I think it's 
Chronicles 20, verse 20. Chronicles 20, 20. Yeah. 20, 20. Yeah. yeah, and he said, Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe your prophets, and so shall you prosper. You know, I don't know the report that is before you. You know, Daddy said, and God spoke. He cried out to God. It was a personal experience. And I would like to encourage as many of us, perhaps that book would be interesting for someone to read and understand the full testimony of what happened in the life and ministry of our Father and God. There's a book. What's the name of that book? Daddy, remind me again. God is greater than all. God is greater than all. I will encourage us to search for that book and read. You see, a personal experience of what it means, knowledge of God, to keep a man when a man is passing through the storms of life. I don't know the report before you. I pray that God, via this knowledge, will help you go through it. Mm -hmm. Finally, before we round off, can I find God? Your yes, on this. thank you so much. Now, talking about the knowledge of God as creator. Honestly speaking, if you know him as a creator, then you don't have any problem. Now, look at what Isaiah 43 verse 19 says. He said, behold, I will do a, a new, new thing. thing. If there is anywhere in your body that is paining you, God can perform a surgery. New. God can bring in something new. New. Mm -hmm. Refreshing. Just yesterday, a man was sharing a testimony that he had kidney failure. And uh, he was so worried. But he just came to the altar in our church there, kneel and pray to God. And that he has done 10 tests. Hmm. Everything confirms that is normal. Awesome. Without surgery, without any drugs, without anything. What God This can kind do. of testimonies is happening everywhere. Hmm. There are some that have lost their womb through uh, operation of fibroid. Hmm. And they say the ch chances of con conceiving is no longer there. And then, and then who does you see things? it. Bam. Twins coming up from there. Awesome. So God is the creator. He has spare part for everything that you can think of. Just believe in him. Trust in him. And he will replace it. Awesome. He'll give you something new. Indeed. What this God of ours cannot do does not exist. Mm. I don't know the report before you. Whose report will you believe? Trust this God. He can do a new things. He can overrule the counsel of men. He can lift you up from the merry clay and set your feet upon the rock. Why? Because he's the creator of the heavens. And the earth. Conclusion. God is the ultimate creator and besides him there is none else. Uh. He is not only the creator but also the preserver of the whole universe. Unfortunately today many are worshipping the created things rather than the creator himself. Let us draw ourselves back to the creator and it shall be well with us. Food for thought. If not God, then who is the uncreated creator? Please think over this. You know, Father and God talked about those who uh, promote the concept of the Big Bang and talk about meteorites that came together. Then from where did the meteorite came from? The question is, if not God, who is the uncreated creator? Let's ponder over that. Memory verse, we take it together. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7. We read it together. I, I form the light, light and, and create, create darkness. darkness. I, I make peace and create, create evil. evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. We trust that the Lord has spoken to us again today, helping us to appreciate, like he stated in our aim, that he is the ultimate creator and preserver of the whole universe. He will preserve you. He has not forgotten you, and he will never forsake you. He will keep and preserve you until the end. And he will preserve you, until we come your way again next week on this same side as we continue to learn and grow under the feet of Jesus. We are equally very grateful to our resource persons, venerable Father and God. Thank you for that testimony. It's come to strengthen someone out there. May the Lord continue to uphold you and lines continually fall unto you in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Canon Father and God. It's always a joy. Thank you so much. I look at you and say, these are encyclopedia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for those wonderful teachings. And thank you for the insights you brought today in the course of this discussion. May the Lord honor you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Child of God, until we come your way on this side next week, keep on living for Jesus. This creator will never forget you. God bless you. <laughs>